Hi, so today I'm going to talk to you about systems engineering. As Hazel has said, this is a part of a speech that I'm, or not a speech, but a workshop I'm giving to Year 9s. So this should be simple and easy to understand, hopefully. So today what I'm going to speak about is what is systems engineering, who does it involve, and how do you do it? So firstly, let's start with what is it. So let's start with some definitions, because they're really exciting. So, the first one is, it is a discipline that concentrates on the design and the application of the whole system opposed to its parts. The second says, it's an interdisciplinary approach and means to enable the realisation of successful systems. Well, that's not very easy to understand, is it? Basically, what it is, is you're looking at the bigger picture. You're engineering, but on a big scale. So, it's looking at complicated things that you're trying to make simpler through systems engineering. So when I went on to the INCOSI website, which stands for International Council of Systems Engineers, I made a word cloud of it, because I thought that would look nice, and hopefully you think it does as well, and you can see what the main words that come up about systems engineering are. You've got things like interdisciplinary, parts, elements, needs, functions, and all of this. So um, as we go through, you'll see these words in the bottom corner to indicate what we're referring to, and hopefully I'll explain it as well. But as you can see, it's quite a mixture of everything, really. So now we're going on to who is involved in systems engineering. As you can see, it's interdisciplinary. So lots of different disciplines are involved in it, lots of engineering disciplines. So you might have a mechanical engineer who, for this example, we're going to use a space shuttle. And for a space shuttle, a mechanical engineer might design the frame of it to withstand the shock and the stresses of going into space. Whereas a thermal engineer might look at the heat profile on a wing like this to see how hot it will get on re-entry as it's coming into the Earth again. And you might have a radio frequency engineer who will then look at transmitting from the Earth to a space shuttle and back again, because obviously you want to talk to your astronauts, and then a systems engineer, well, hopefully you'll get the idea of what they do. So it is about having different disciplines working together to create a product or a system. So what does a systems engineer actually do then? Have any of you actually heard of systems engineering before? Hands up. Is that because you've talked to me? <laughs> no. Right. Well, as you can tell, not everyone will have heard of this, and even less year nines as well. So, probably no year nines, I hope. So really, what it's all about is knowing a bit about everything, it's piecing the little parts together, or as they call them, elements. And it's not about knowing everything, it's about knowing who to ask, when to ask it, and just making sure it all comes together to make a whole. So now we talk about how we do systems engineering. There are a few ways that you could do it. Usually they're based on a model, and, or a process I should say. So this is a classic systems engineering process. Might not look like one, but it is. And it is called the V model. Imaginatively named because it looks a bit like a V. Or a U, but never mind. So as you go across the top there, you've got time. So you start at the top left, as you can see, and it's all about needs versus wants. So when you're looking to design a system, you're going to be looking at what does the customer actually need, opposed to what do they want. So for the mobile phone example, a mobile phone, everyone goes, oh, I really would want this to have a really great camera, touch screen, I want it to have Android on it, or iOS, whatever. And that's great, yeah, that might be what you want. But really, what do you need it to do? You probably just need it to call somebody. So that's what you might call a requirement. And that's the first stage on the model. So what's next? So now you're moving down into design. So if you're looking at a space shuttle, you might think, well, what do I need from a space shuttle? So for the requirements, you probably want it to go into space. You might want it to take people. And you might want it to come back as well. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. So then, if you're a systems engineer, you probably think about it and go, well, 
You probably need an orbiter then. That's just a word for something that the astronauts go in so that they can go to space and come back safely. And you might want it to also have a solid rocket booster. And this is obviously to give the thrust. And then if you're going to have thrust, you need some fuel. So you can see now this is starting to break down into bits. So that's part of what systems engineering is all about. So this part is called design. And now you can see we're moving down the left-hand side of the V. So now we're getting towards the middle. This is where you start to make things. So for a space shuttle, you might start to make hydrogen fuel cells or structures like this. And you can see the huge things that they have to be bespoke, bespokely made. Mm. Uh, they have to be made, and especially because they, you can't buy these off the shelf. They're special. And you get the impression of size from the people here. And you might also create a prototype. So for a, a space shuttle, what they did is they created this thing called the Enterprise, amazingly, and they took it up on a plane. So it was took up on a 747, and it piggybacked on it up into the sky, and then they dropped it, and it just glided down to Earth, which I think is pretty amazing. So this was a prototype to test that a space shuttle would actually work. Just speed up. So this is what you might call implementation. And there are lots of things you can do in this stage, but this is where the making or buying of things might happen. So now you're moving up the right-hand side of the V, and if it's a space shuttle, in this case, once they've flown it up, they've created this prototype, they're going to fly it down loads of times. And they've also got to integrate the bits. So this is basically the orbiter itself. In the integration phase, they would have to put that together with the big fuel cells they saw earlier. So once they put it all together, they'll want to test it. So what they did with the space shuttle is they actually flew it down 200 times to make sure it would work. And they made little improvements as they kept doing it. So this is called integration and test. So system, systems engineers are involved in all of these stages and help define what goes on. And at the end, you really want to make sure your customer is agreeing to what you've made. They're going to take it off your hands. So this is what you might call customer acceptance. And in the end, hopefully you've made a working space shuttle <coughs> if you're NASA, and you use it. Great. So, to wrap up, systems engineering, we've talked about what is it? Well, it's a bit of everything, really. Who does it involve? everyone, and how do you do it? Using a process. Thank you. Thank you.